Good morning and welcome to our Mother's Day service. Just a few announcements before we start. On May 22nd, we will be having a baptism of the grandchild of Stan and Muriel Tamari and the parents are Daniel and Kara Tamari. Please join us and welcome them into our family of faith. Also on Sunday, May 29th, we will be installing our new part-time lay minister, Pastor Blondell, and we will be having a, a luncheon, a catered luncheon afterwards. So please sign up and let us know how many people will be here. Before we start with the um, call to worship, please bow your heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to honor you and all your daughters. We praise you for all the women and men in our lives, for their faith, love, courage, and leadership. May you bless us all as you created men and women and called it good. Thank you for the gift of life you have created for us. Thank you for the women who bore us. In the name of Jesus, we pray with gratitude. Amen. Watchword for the week. Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb from Revelation 7 10. Please stand for the gathering hymn.
God, creator of our first home and our only true rest. We gather as your family to celebrate our, di our diverse homes and to seek your blessings on them. God of relationships, you have put within our heart a longing that only you can satisfy. Yet we need each other to learn of your steadfast love throughout all generations. Open our hearts that we may learn how to manifest your love. You may be seated. God, our creator, on this day, we, we remember those whose effort and sacrifice gave us life. We are grateful for the life that was in them and the life that was given to us. We remember those who mothered and raised us. We give thanks for the birth moms, adopted moms, foster moms, older sisters, aunts, grandmothers, stepmothers, and others who have held us and fed us, who cared for us and kissed away our pain. We pray that our lives might reflect the love that they showed to us and that our own actions bring them honor. We pray for older mothers whose children are grown. Grant them joy and satisfaction for a job well done. We pray for new mothers experiencing changes they could not predict. Grant them rest and peace as they trust you. We pray for those who are expecting. Grant them patience and good counsel in the coming months. We pray for mothers who face the demands of single parenthood. Grant them strength and wisdom. We pray for mothers who enjoy financial abundance. Grant them time to share with their families. We pray for mothers who are raising their children in poverty. Grant them relief and justice. We pray for stepmothers. Grant them patience, understanding, and love. We pray for mothers who are separated from their children. Grant them faith and hope. We pray for mothers whose support systems are strained. Grant them support and insight. We pray for mothers who have lost children. Grant them comfort in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray for mothers who terminated a pregnancy. Grant them healing and peace. We pray for mothers whose children were fostered or adopted by others. Grant them confidence as they trust in your providence and love We pray for the adoptive mothers who provided guidance and insight. Grant them joy and gratitude for the gift you have provided. We pray for girls and women who think about being mothers. Grant them wisdom and discernment. We pray for women who desperately want or wanted to be mothers. Grant them the grace to find fullness and wholeness. We pray for all women who have assumed a mothering role in the life of a child, grandmothers, sisters, aunts, friends, women within our congregation. Grant them joy and the opportunity. We pray for those people present who are grieving the loss of a mother in the past year. Grant them comfort and hope in Christ's resurrection. I ask all mothers, uh, women, and girls to stand for a blessing from Pastor Lagara. Lord, we thank you for the gift of motherhood in all its forms. We thank you for the many examples of faithful women in scripture, Sarah, Hannah, Elizabeth, and Lois. Let us take a moment of silence to remember those women who have inspired us. Today, we are mindful of all these women, and especially Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had the courage and faith to say yes to your calling. May these women gathered here today emulate these examples of faith. Bless them, 
on this special day in the name of the triune God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. The first reading today is from Revelation. I will be reading from my Bible called the book, so the words will be a little different. The message remains. After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count from all nations and provinces, provinces and languages, standing in front of the throne and before the lamb, clothed in white, with palm branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a mighty shout, salvation comes from our God upon the throne and from the lamb. And now all the angels were crowding around the throne around the elders and the four living beings and falling face down before the throne and worshiping God. Amen, they said, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and forever. Amen. Then one of the 24 elders asked me, do you know who these are who are clothed in white? and where they come from? No, sir, I replied, please tell me. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulations, he said. They wash their robes and whiten them by the blood of the lamb. That is why they are here before the throne of God, serving him day and night in the temple. The ones sitting on the throne will shelter them. They will never be hungry again, nor thirsty, and they will be protected from the scorching noontime heat. For the lamb standing in front of the throne will feed them and be their shepherd and lead them to the springs of the water of life and God will wipe their tears away. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 23. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He, re he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The next reading is from John chapter 10, verses 22 through 
30. <clears throat> it was winter and Jesus was in Jeru Jerusalem at the time of the dedication celebration. He was at the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Hall. The Jewish leaders surrounded him and asked, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. I have already told you and you don't believe me, Jesus replied. The proof is in the miracles I do in the name of my father, but you don't believe me because you are not part of my flock. My sheep recognize my voice and I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one shall snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. So no one can kidnap them from me. I and the father are one. Thank you. As we continue to read the, the scriptures, we will look and uh, read from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which when translated is Dorcas, who was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lida was near Joppa, Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lida, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to the, her feet. Then he called the believers and the widows and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. I am so, I mean, I'm jumping for joy. I feel like a dog with two tails. And chasing their tail, right? Uh, this morning, I have some family members and even a friend uh, uh, accompanying me for this service. Uh, I see my sister. She's over there. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that Anthony's not with her as her husband, but, uh, most likely he's at home. And we have my cousin Wanda with her two twin uh, sons, Pat Manathan, right? Aaron and Ashwin Pat Manathan. They were telling me how to pronounce their last names because their dad is from Sri Lanka and her dad, their dad is not with them because he's in Canada. So everybody's like uh, here and uh, trying to worship. Plus we have a, a gentleman, friend, I just met last Sunday, uh, Mr. Jose Diaz. He's a retired officer from the court system here in Staten Island, and his daughter lives across the street. So it's one of those things. I'm a talker. I'm a talker. I always talk to myself even. So, but, so I'm always like saying, hey, uh, yeah, go to Marine Church. I'm preaching. I go to Dunkin' Donuts. I tell them, hey, I'm preaching. They invited me. Yes. So I always try to do that because I'm excited. I, I think that when you're trying to serve some, uh, the Lord, and you're trying to do something, especially mothers, they know about enthusiasm is, you know, like trying to prepare, get ready, uh, feed the children, uh, dress them, uh, do whatever it is and scold them too, you know, give them the instructions, necessary instructions, but it's very important to do that. The text for today uh, was recommended uh, by Sister um, Muriel. And I say, hey, listen, I'll, we'll take it, the recommendations, the theological recommendations for today's text, the passage because it's about uh, celebrating motherhood, celebrating womanhood, 
celebrating that gift that not everyone has uh, and not even really wants, wants really, because uh, they've done service with men. Would you like to be a woman? Would you like to be a man uh, 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 to give birth? And they're like, eh, <laughs> no, skip that. Skip that. I'd rather be a catcher for the Mets. Yes. Right. <laughs> so it's one of those things that even though we applaud, we praise, uh, is a very hard task. Is a her is very difficult mission. And the text for today um, brings us to a very interesting story. I'm using the, the thing smartphone thing uh, because I usually use uh, three by five cards in order for my notes. But I'm trying to be technologically oriented because this week I'm gonna guess what? I'm gonna be that magical age of six five. So uh, I, I don't want. I I know Social Security not too happy, but <laughs> they better get ready. They better get ready, even though it's not it's a big thing. But we do need uh, to remember God's word and these stories that make us alive, that give us purpose, that give us meaning. And in uh, in today's uh, text. Uh, what we find is a beautiful, beautiful story. And I'm going to uh, use the word in Greek of what Peter told Tabitha, who also, her name in Greek is Dorcas. And the Greek word is anastethai. And it sounds like anesthesia, right? Nobody likes anesthesia because then you're like, what is the doctor doing? Uh, but anastethai, it's the phrase in Greek, which Peter used to tell Tabitha, rise up, arise, anastetai. Uh, as you know, uh, mothers especially have a great task of waking up their children, right? Waking up their children. Uh, right, Aaron and Ashwin, that Mama Wanda has to call you up. And I, I heard her, her voice this morning. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. It's plural. They're in bunk beds. Come on, boys. Come on down like the game. And we got to get ready. Rise up. Rise and shine. And give God the glory, glory. You got to wake up the children. And each mom has their own style, right? You remember all, the, the, all who are mothers here, you had your own style of how to do it. You put the lights off and on, off and on, blinking, 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 blinking. Or you will also remember some other experiences of how other people get woken up, get woken up. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play this little soundtrack that hopefully it will work for me to see if this reminds you of something. Let me put the voice, the volume, because I had taken out, let me see. This is a, a recording from the West Point. As a matter of fact, one of my cousins, uh, the, my daughter, my oldest daughter, her cousin went to West Point. But this music, I also heard because I worked in Salvation Army Camp in 1977. And uh, at least seven o'clock in the morning in the camp, that was a 300 acre camp, it would go through the sound system in all the cabins, there were about 10, 12, 12 cabins. And all the kids had to, girls, boys, whatever, that a lot of them didn't behave at nighttime. So they had very sleepy eyes and they had to listen to this top 10 best recording of the lifetime. Da, 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 da. Get up, rise up. The story that we have today is about Peter's words to a woman to get up and to rise up. This passage is found in the book of Acts, which was written by Luke, and Luke was a doctor. And he was a historian, and he was Greek. 
And he was not one of the original apostles, just in case. Luke was not an original apostle. He was just a disciple that came along later on after Jesus had uh, uh, resurrected and had ascended and left his uh, 11 apostles uh, that had remained. But Luke uh, had a task of writing uh, these stories and he wrote the book of Luke and he wrote the book of Acts um, because he wanted to inform a friend of his, his name Theophilus, about these things that were recorded and these things that had to do about Jesus and had to do about the early church. Early church. And Luke uh, was very, is a great specialist in commenting about experiences of healing and experiences of miracles and how he described how Jesus' ministry was and how he described the apostles' ministries in Jerusalem and how they went to different places to imitate and to duplicate and to even do greater things than these because Jesus had promised that to his disciples. And therefore, when Luke uh, writes in, in the book of Acts about all these things that were happening, he dedicates a great portion about stories about, about Peter. We remember Peter. Uh, everybody has a certain impression and opinion about Peter uh, because Peter was this guy that at times was kind of irrational, impulsive, hot-tempered, but at the same time, he would do some crazy stuff for the Lord. And what happened in, according to the book of Acts is that Peter had such a great experience in Jerusalem in that upper room where there was about 120 that had prayed, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit, a certain power went over them, and they even spoke in tongues that other people from other countries heard them and say, hey, they're speaking that language. They're speaking Puerto Rican over here. Oh, they're speaking Dominican. They're speaking Hungarian. They're speaking Ukrainian. They're speaking this. They're speaking all kinds of languages. And there was this great experience which was called Pentecost. And in that Pentecost, all of a sudden, this great fisherman from Galilee turns out to be a great preacher. He said, what? Brother Mike is a preacher? You see, my brother Mike, well, I've never seen him preach. Well, maybe give him a chance. He'll give it a, a podcast, and, a, and he'll be like Jimmy Swaggart. He'll be like Jerry Fowell. He'll be like whomever, because you don't know what God has for you. You don't know how God can call you and put those words in your mouth so that you could express them. So Peter, this great fisherman that didn't graduate from Jerusalem Theological Seminary, he was preaching, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the Lord had given him these gifts about healing. It's saying that uh, Peter one time goes to the temple, chapter three of Acts, with John. He said, hey, let's go to the temple to pray in the morning. And there's this beggar uh, saying, can you please give me, can you help me? And can you do this? And what Peter said, hey, listen, we're broke. Check out our tunics. It's all empty. We don't have anything. But what we have, we don't have gold. We don't have silver. But what we have, we're going to give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up. All right, hear the word. Rise up. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up. And then all of a sudden, this beggar, this paralytic, what he did, he started jumping up and down. Jumping up and down. He had never done that. He was jumping up and down like J.M. around from the Mississippi, from the Missouri Grizzlies, like an NBA player. Boom, 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 boom. He was happy. He was healed. But then Peter's ministry of healing was such of, of such great nature that it said that when he will walk around the streets of Jerusalem, people would put the sick people in mats and in cots. So that Peter's shadow will fall upon them and they would get healed. And of course, there's some of us that say, yeah, tell me another one. Well, listen, I have a friend of mine who has two doctorates. And we also discussed about this thing about miracles and healings. And she goes, you know, Jesus, what happens is this. In this Western world culture with so much technology, we depend so much on technology that we don't see miracles. And we don't see as many healings. But they do occur. But in other worlds and civilizations and other cultures, they have less hospitals, less medical centers, less this, less that. And the power of God gets so revealed that all of a sudden you hear about stories of healings and you hear about miracles that have happened in a certain tribe, in a certain town because of what's available. 
Because if you are a believer in God, and if you say that God has all power, you better believe that God has all power. If you believe that God is love, you better believe that God is love because God's love will be revealed. And in Peter's ministry, the Lord gave him this man, simple man with not much of an education, yet very, at times, very impulsive. This man was the man that God chose to do a certain type of ministry. And it says that at one point in time in chapter nine of the book of Acts, it said that he was taken to a place where there was a man that had been paralytic, bedridden for eight years, Aeneas. And that's before this story that we're going to talk about. And Aeneas was bedridden for eight years. Can you imagine bed sores? Can you imagine the care for a person like that? And yet, Peter visited this man. The man is called Aeneas and told him, Aeneas, rise up. Aeneas, rise up. Get up. I'm like, get up? I've been here for eight. No, no. Get up. And he said that he got up. And people became not only amazed, but believed. Believed in God. Because this is not a magic show. Hello? Healing from God is not a magic show. It's not like, believe it or not, Ripley's. No, it's not that. It's God's power of healing that uses an instrument. And now in our story, it says that Peter was in Lydda and he got called up, not by text, not by email, but it's the old fashioned way where they had to send people to get you. So they say, it says the story that they sent two men, we don't know their names. It could have been Jim, it could have been John, it could have been Peter, it could have been Mark been Ronnie, whomever, but they sent two men to make sure <laughs> he comes, right? You grab him by the leg, you grab him by the hand, well, we got to bring this guy, because we've heard about you. We've heard about you. But you know, go on, what's the invitation about? The invitation is that a lady named Tabitha, sounds like a cat's name, right? <laughs> Some people were like, oh, there was a commercial about that, Tabitha. Uh, and they called him in to say, listen, come with us to Joppa. I had the privilege in 1985 to go to Joppa. Beautiful, beautiful town, the sea coast. Beautiful, beautiful. And so it doesn't say that Peter said, oh, no, you got you to gotta tell me why, how much you're going to pay me. Because there are no ministries now that if you don't give them money, they're not going to show up to sing, to preach, to teach, to anything. But they said, no, Peter, we need you. Come. So Peter comes and accompanies them. And when they accompany him, it's the old fashioned days that when people die, where they put the person? In a funeral home? No, at the home, in the home. I grew up that way in the 60s. My grandma, they, they placed her in the, in the house, in the household. And everybody from the neighborhood, you know how it is? Everybody wants their cheese crackers, what, chocolate, coffee, juice, whatever it is that they serve. Whether it be an Irish wake, Italian wake, whatever, whatever, it is, we go, you know. And so I'm sure the house was packed. And Peter was taken up to the upper room. He went to the upper room. That means it has like a two floor. Upper room. Remember upper room? Does that sound ring a bell? Upper room where 120 people were in an upper room. And what happened in the upper room? It reminds me of a gospel. The upper room, going up the upper room, going up the upper room. I'm not a singer, okay? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Ah, Peter goes to the upper room. And I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure Peter said, I remember the time I was in the upper room in Jerusalem. Now I'm in Joppa. Because when God wants to reveal his power, it doesn't matter where you're at. It could be Jerusalem. It could be Joppa. It could be whatever it is. The name of the town, it doesn't matter. The address, the location, it could be the projects or it could be a private home because God wants, has, has a purpose. So they put him in the upper room and they showed uh, him an exhibition. It was like a gallery. The widows were crying. The widows were crying and they were showing Peter 
all the tunics and the cloaks that this lady, Tabitha Dorcas, had done. And they were, and when Jewish cried, in the Jewish culture, when they cried, they cried. Not like, mm, whimper, no whimper. Ah, ah, screaming all over the place. Usually men, and, and when they're grieving, Jewish men, when they're grieving, even still, you go to Brooklyn, you don't even have to go to Brooklyn. Yeah, boom, 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 banging their chest. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't live. I can't. And this woman's death meant a lot to that community. Meant a lot. And, 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 and he was like impressed about what they were telling her, telling him about how she was doing, what she had done in her ministry. She helped us. She did this. She did that. Look, look, look. And you know what Peter did? Okay, that's the good thing about being a disciple. When you're a disciple of Jesus, you imitate what, how Jesus does things. Remember Jesus, one time he was called in because a 12-year-old uh, daughter of the Jairus, the chief of the synagogue, had died. And when they called him in and he, he finally got there, uh, there was a big crowd too, crying and doing that. And then when Jesus said to them, hey, listen, she's sleeping. They're like, what, wow, really? She's dead, dead like a dead horse. That, that, I mean, she's dead. But yet, Jesus said, no, she's sleeping. But you know what? Everybody got to leave. Everybody got to leave. The unbelievers, get out. When do you want somebody that's not with the cause? It's like you, 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 Ukraine right now, right? If you got soldiers, I, 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 you want to fight this or, or you want to hide? So go hide. We got to stick with whoever believes. And in Jesus' experience with a dead 12-year-old, he took out the people, get them out, and prayed, and rose up that young girl, the, the daughter of Jairus. As I said, Peter was in that event. Peter experienced how Jesus did that. So now Peter's turn. Peter's turn, because what Jesus does, he gives you like an example, try to do the example and try to do it and the Lord will respect your style, your style, the way you do it because each one is different. Some people are loud, some people are more quiet, some people are more electric, some people are more ADD, some people are not as ADD. But yet the Lord will always use someone. And Peter in this moment goes to that upper room and he says, Leave, leave me alone with her. And then he, first thing he does, he kneels down and he prays. When you're going to do something for the Lord, whatever it is that you're going to do, you better talk to him first. Talk to him first. Even when you're looking for a parking lot, for a parking space, because one never knows what's going to happen in your life. And the Lord Use Peter to do his will. And Peter knelt down as he prayed. We don't know what he said to the Lord. But whatever he said worked, right? That's the secret. Whatever he said, it worked. Because the Lord respects what the prayers of your heart. Each one will pray differently in a time of crisis. We'll pray with different words. Some fancy words. Some words that are like, uttered with a lot of tears and, and, and a lot of shouts or maybe some whimpers. Or the Lord will read what's happening through our eyes, through our tears, the Lord, even in your silence, in your silent prayer. You don't have to be so loud. You don't have to shout it out. When you pray, you pray. I remember me as a pastor, one of my favorite things is visiting. One time they invited me, go, go and visit this baby newborn he's in intensive care he's in an isolation the parents are desperate they don't even allow the parents to go because they don't want to traumatize the parents and the this and the that and the that and the that and i went there i remember the name of the baby sebastian and when i went that i asked permission i got my card so that they allow me to go in when i saw the baby there the only one in that crib I was praying in a low voice 
It was me and him. But I was not alone. God was with us. And I prayed for the baby. <laughs> when I prayed and I finished, I heard an amen. I opened my eyes and there was a female doctor. And she goes, thank you. Because even doctors know that they don't do it alone. Even doctors know that maybe they could get some cures, but only God gives the healing. And I'm a believer that God heals. I'm a believer that, you, that God used Peter that day to speak to the body. Because he said, he spoke to the body after he prayed. He spoke to that body that was not moving, that was dead, and said, rise up. Rise up. Rise up. And he says that she opened her eyes, saw Peter, and sat. But the instruction was not to sit. The instruction was to get up, to rise up. So what did Peter do? Took her by the hand, rose her up, and then called in the widows and the holy ones, which were disciples that were perhaps with him, called them up and presented that this is Tabitha. This is Dorcas. And it says from that day on, Peter remained in that town in Joppa and stayed with Simon the Tanner. What are lessons that we could pick up from this though? God has a purpose with each female, with each woman, with each mother, with each widow, with each divorced woman, separated woman, abused woman, traumatized woman, whatever it is, God has a purpose. And God listens to our prayers. And God knows what our gifts are to the community. God knows what our gifts are and what we have given to the community. God knows the cookies that you have baked, the cakes that you have baked, the things that you have knitted. Whatever it is that you have done, God knows all of that. And we need to be reminded that God is taking into consideration all our almsgiving, all our good deeds. He takes those into consideration. And let me tell you, God is not Santa Claus. Because even when we do not behave, even when we're disobedient, when we do acts of omission and commission, the Lord will do his purpose in us and will not let us die. He will come to us and will rise us up. God has a purpose with each woman. And let me remind you that this phrase of get up in New Testament shows up a hundred times. The commentators have counted them. Rise up, get up, raise up, wake up. Because God wants us to be awakened, to rise up to a new life, to a new circumstance, so that the chains of death cannot destroy us. And you know, another thing about Tabitha Dorcas is that she didn't have to have a title to do her work. Because the work that she was doing, working with the widows, that was the work that was assigned to the deacons, the seven male deacons that were supposed to be bilingual, filled with the spirit to serve the widows in the church of Jerusalem. But yet, Dorcas didn't need that title to be a deaconess and help the widows. Not only, not even, not even serving the tables, but what she was doing was making clothing. Because when you're a widow, it's very tough. There's no social security back then, 2,000 years ago. There's no social security, no pension plan, no retirement plan, no disability, no anything. It's just you and your God. But yet, the Lord used Dorcas, and we don't know the status of Dorcas. If she had been divorced, if she was a widow, perhaps she was just single but the Lord put place in her heart to help others. 
and she did God's will. And you know what, church? When the Lord sees a church that has an open space for women to develop their gifts, their talents, to be empathetic, to be compassionate to the weak and the vulnerable, the Lord will bless and will rise up anybody. Because when the Lord wants to heal somebody, they, the Lord will heal a person in an integrated way, in a holistic manner. The Lord will heal you physically, emotionally, mentally, financially. He will heal you in whichever way he wants and he pleasures himself because he loves to bless his children. Because as John 10 says, that the Lord has us in his, the palm of his hands. I am here today because of the work of many women that have done great work in my life. Not only as a physical mom that gave birth to me, but also women pastors that also helped me mature. And I remember when I was 11 years old, my pastor was about 80 years old. She was a woman that the Lord had called from Chicago to come to Puerto Rico to this little town near the beach where the mosquitoes were like invaders. They were, they were very wicked. And yet that woman pastor, Sister Rivera, Pastor Rivera, Herminia Rivera, she fed me literally because she could cook great. And after the service, the Pentecostal service, we got out at 11 o'clock in the night time, sometimes at midnight. And still people would ask her, did you make something today? And she was a single lady. Did you make something today? Well, I made a little bit of rice and whatever she cooked. And my sister's there and my cousin is there. It's like, you know, accident. This was not planned. Her, 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 the way she cooked, it was like, it didn't matter what she cooked. It just came out great. She didn't go to cooking school, culinary institute of America. She didn't go to none of that stuff. But it's because she did stuff with love. And you know what she would do? She would put $20 bills in my grandmother's Bible without my grandmother knowing. And so my grandmother at home would kneel down to pray, open her Bible. And between the book of Luke and the book of Acts, there's a $20 bill. Hello, Lord, thank you for providing. Am I too excited? Sorry. <laughs> Flashback. Gratitude. Because we know when God uses a female in 80% of church leadership in the United States, just in case, and even worldwide, 80% leadership, the ones, the women are the ones the motor. <laughs> if, you, if, if your woman's uh, ministry ain't too strong, your church is going to go like, because sometimes men are too analytical. Oh, no, we have to, we have to look at the budget. We have to look at the budget. Oh, we only got 10 cents. We can only do 10 cent work. But the uh, women ministry, they're like, we got 10 cents. We're going to do like $150 of men work ministry. And there's no reward for the work of the church because the Lord looks at us and helps us to do the ministry. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. Amen.
Let us remember in our prayers, our folks that are written in our bulletins uh, and people that we have in our hearts and in our minds and because the Lord hears our prayers and the Lord heals and restores and renews our faith. Lord, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to intercede and pray for our people. We are your sheep and you are our shepherd. Thank you for your love. For those who need healing, may you touch their bodies, may you touch their minds, may you touch their anxious souls. May you provide for those who need financial means in order to subsist and in order to be able to face the daily challenges of daily living. We pray, Lord, for our church's ministry as we tend to the sick, as we visit the shut-ins, as we remember those mothers, especially among us, who have served faithfully to you, to their children, to their families, and also to our church family. We just pray and we thank you because you will do much more than what we ask or deserve and we know that you will also bring love and justice and peace to our land and to every country that is facing different times of despair and challenge. And it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. We prepare our hearts uh, to present our offerings and our gifts to the Lord this morning. pray together. Great God, use these gifts to extend your work here on earth. Nourish us now in your word and spirit as we help to teach, learn, and guide others who you have entrusted in our care. May God help us to devote ourselves to good works and acts of charity. May we serve you day and night wherever we are and in all we do. Blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to you, God, forever and ever. In your serving name, Jesus, amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing, Lord bless our homes.
Lord, as we depart from your sanctuary, may your spirit be with us and may a special ble be a blessing be to all our mothers that are present and all those who remember their moms who are not with them at this time, but yet we thank you for the treasure and the gift that you've given us, a mom or a foster mom or a grandma that raised us or even a surrogate mom that's, or adopted mom that you gave us that blessing. Now bless your people, bless us and guide us in your peace, love and justice in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.